Oh, hi. Welcome to the Gooder Podcast. I am your host, Diana Freik. Hey, as a partner and CMO of Retail Voodoo, an award-winning branding agency, I've met and worked with some of the most amazing women in the naturals industry, in food, beverage, and wellness specifically. And as such, I decided to create the Gooder Podcast to interview these great people and subject matter experts. Um really to have them share their insights, their passions and expertise and help businesses all around the world become gooder. Um, today, I am so excited to introduce my guest, Danielle, Danielle, is it Laubenstein? Am I getting that right? Uh, Laubenstein. Laubenstein, thank you. I okay. inherited the last name, so I'm also getting used to it. <laughs> so Danielle, she is Director of Global Marketing for Mauna Loa, overseeing the future and legacy of the company's direction into becoming Hawaii's wellness brand. She believes that product development and holistic marketing looks at beauty as a combination of qualities of paradise, creating brand culture and products that empower the mind, nourishes the body, spirit, and evokes emotional health. Danielle has worked in CPG health and wellness, as well as in the global travel luxury confectionery space for over a decade for companies such as Chocolove, Godiva, and DFS. And I'm going to add this last bit because super important to me and because it's within walking distance of my house. She is, uh, she holds a BS in business administration from the University of Washington, a fellow Husky in the house. (laughs) Welcome, aloha, Danielle. I can't believe I get to say that. How is LA today? Well, it's good. It's beautiful out. Super warm. It's going to be 75 this weekend. Couldn't complain. Yeah, and I hear yeah. you have family surfing on sand dunes today. That can never be a bad thing. Yeah, they're having a blast. Um, right on the beach, there's a berm right there. So um, took them out there so I could do this interview and have a little bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> yeah. I When I was a kid, I went sandboarding. I guess it's sandboarding. Um, at White Sands uh, out in Alamogordo where the nuclear test sites were. Oh, yeah. And it's White Sands. It's literally miles and miles of white sand that are mountainous, and you can sled down them. So I, I know how much fun that can be. Yeah, we're going to have to take them snow sledding at some point. They haven't seen snow yet. And I think that's the great thing about California. You can go into the snow as well yeah. to the beach on the same day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. Well, let's let's talk about what why we're really here today. Um, let's first start at the very basic. Like, let's talk about a brief history of Mauna Loa and yeah. its relationship to Hawaiian host, because there, I think not a lot of people know what that relationship is. Yeah, so uh, Mauna Loa is named after our namesake uh, mountain or volcano that's um, on the Big Island. So our plant is right at the the base of Mauna Loa. Mauna meaning mountain in Hawaiian and Loa means long. So the long mountain, it's one of two uh, volcanoes um, on the Big Island. So Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. Uh. Um, Yeah, so that's like the namesake of it. We um, started um, in 1949, but even before that, um, we were part, let's even go back before that, like um, Mm -hmm. macadamias were brought to Hawaii as like another crop after the the sugar industry. Oh, really? Kind of, yeah, moved on. So they were looking for a crop that would work really well in the volcanic soil, that mm-hmm. liked humidity. Um, and that's why the macadamia was brought over from Australia, where it's indigenous to Australia. Oh, OK. Yeah. So that's how Mauna Loa um, started. Um, it kind of broke off from a, another company. Um, Mm -hmm. and then was renamed Mauna Loa. Um, And then from there, um, it was owned by several groups, then owned by Hershey for a while. Oh. Um, Right, and then a couple years ago, um, Hershey sold Mauna Loa to Hawaiian Host, so our sister company. And Hawaiian Host was um, started by Mamoru Takatani, um, first started in Maui before uh, moving to Honolulu. Mm. And so Hawaiian Host is really on the uh, confectionery macadamia side and Mauna gotcha. Loa more on the, on the macadamia side. So two together, we're 80%, 80 90% of the, um, the business wow. uh, in, in Hawaii for mm-hmm. gifting and also just macadamias in general. Mm-hmm. And Mauna Loa is over 55% of the macadamia market on the mainland as well. <gasps> Wow, that's huge. I didn't know that. Yeah, quite big. 
yeah. and growing. Uh, yes. Well, the, and that is your, like, that's underneath your watch right now, right? So let's talk about that. Some big, like literally this week and last week, big things happening with um, some brand work, right? Do you want yes. to, what can you share? Talk a little bit about what's happening right now and what the goals are. Yeah, so um, when our CEO, Ed Schultz, came on board a couple of um, years ago, he actually took the helm on January 1st, mm -hmm. just before everything that happened with um, with COVID, of course. Oh, my gosh. And, and part of you know him coming on board was, you know, how should we position both brands? Mm -hmm. And so the direction is really looking at Hoyne host as the luxury confectionery gifting side, like the, the Ohana side, where okay. it's like sharing and family. And yes. Mauna Loa really going into health and wellness and being about me. Like, how do I make me better? How do I like mm. protect my body temple? How do I nourish? Mm. Um, and so part of that, when you look at our magnific magnificent nut, the mighty macadamia, mm -hmm. um, is that it's already naturally keto. It's already... Um, very nutrient dense and like how do we take what has been a gifting item and almost like a commodity like if you take it outside of gifting mm -hmm. out of Hawaii and you come to the mainland and people are eating it just as a as a snack nut as a commodity so how do you um, grow the brand presence as well as become the alchemist of the macadamia and put it into new product categories where right. then we can you know I did a um, interview the other day where they're like you to become like the next planters. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're trying to do. Right. Because that's just nuts. Like, um, we're trying to go into becoming the alchemist and becoming a wellness brand, which yes. expands. You know, it's in an expansion from that. Like nuts is where we're starting, or just you know, single singular macadamias. Right. And and that's where going into other product categories, like the first one that we've done so far is, you know, uh, our dairy-free ice cream that just launched last week and Ooh. is doing phenomenal. Um, and, and that was, that's the beginning. Yes. Yeah. I, I like that, you know, it's really important, of course, as retail we do as brand developers ourselves, we also we see sometimes that there's this um, desire to kind of focus around an ingredient, particularly when it's exotic or popular. And I love hearing you say, "No, this is really about uh, it's about building the community around what the macadamia nut can do." And then that gives you some boundaries as a brand to start creating a, a brand community and in a different way and since that sounds like the yeah. direction that you guys are headed yeah yeah it was really important to us that um as we move into health and wellness that we spoke to that consumer but didn't let go of like our you know you have to protect your base right and you know there's people who have been coming to hawaii for many years that yeah. love mauna loa and of course then of course there's kama'aina you know locals yeah. people who live in hawaii and this brand is you know in their backyard um the big island is a very small island it's a small community um so how do we be authentic as yeah. a hawaii brand right um and that, that's where sometimes even for for me it, it's um i'm the storyteller mm -hmm. i have to get all the aspects of hawaii or the brand and then um liven it up or or um make it come back to life in a new way. We haven't done a rebrand um, for decades now with Mauna yeah. Loa. So yeah. it was a really big, big deal. There's a Hawaiian yeah, word for it called um, kuleana, which is responsibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so before we get too, too much further, I, I, there's something that I, I think would be important for the, our listeners to understand. And that is the difference between a Hawaiian brand and a Hawaii brand or Hawaii owned brand. We talked about it just briefly. Can you yeah. explain that difference and why it's really important for con for at least for our audience who are predominantly brand people in brand and brand management? Can you explain that a little bit? Yes. So um, when you say Hawaiian, it means you are indigenously Hawaiian. And if you're Hawaii, then you are Kamaina, like you're a brand from Hawaii, but okay. um, there, there's not the indigenous aspect of the, the ownership. And that's really important to show. And I remember um, the owner of um, Maui Brewing Company did a mm -hmm. speech. We went over there and like I got to, to meet him and um, mm -hmm. 
and he was just so incredibly respectful mm -hmm. of Maui and that he is a visitor, he's a guest of the island. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he and it was just this humble, really yeah. um, appreciative, but knowing um, his his place there and um, and speaking of it, which I thought was really beautiful. I'm like that, that's what I need to emulate to and really understand. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I'm an outsider. I'm not even coming. I don't. I don't live over there. Mm -hmm. um, during my internship at um, DFS, I was in Hawaii um, for a summer. And then when I was at Godiva, Hawaii was one of my accounts. So I sure. went there consistently for six years. So it's not like it's, you know, um, it's very near and dear to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that, import, that difference in understanding of culture and respecting that um, is really, really important. Yeah, it's so funny. I think about that because I've also been watching the rock who is now launching his second brand yeah. um um canned water and he is hawaiian is that correct i i'm pretty sure yes yeah i think he's hawaiian and um i can see and okay, he's also very you know the rock is the rock but like his um there's so much authenticity there in just his heritage but then the natural understanding and respect by just being Hawaiian and then also growing up there, he that translation is a legitimate um, respect uh, for the community and the culture. So it's really interesting as we start to see Hawaiian brands and owned brands coming into the market. You're we feel like I'm I feel like we're shedding that kind of. Mm, um, tacky sort of component that is still kind of residual from the past kind of mm. uh, patronage. I think there was a term, there was a term that you used earlier, but just kind of like, just so that when people are seeing the brands, these brands coming to life, like your own rebranding, like where is that coming from? I think is really good to understand about being Hawaiian brand and a Hawaii owned brand and why we start to see differences and how those brands then talk to the mainland and the rest of the world. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, yeah. like, I think with um, the responsibility with this rebrand, was also the cultural sensitivities. I mean, every tiny little thing that we put on the packaging, we had to double check it. I mean, I've yeah. got a couple Hawaiian friends that, you know, I'm, I'll text them like, is this, is this okay? Is this okay? Can I say this? You know, um, and it, I'm an Islander myself, but I'm um, Batak, which is a tribe from Sumatra. I'm ah. born and raised over there. Um, mm -hmm. So there's the, like that island culture is very much part of me as well. So it's mm. okay, make sure, you know, we do this right or even, um, you know, respect of the language, making mm -hmm. sure we put the okinas in the right place, which is the right, yeah, like so. Um, the okinas in Hawaii or um, um, the ha hakahakos as well, which is the um, the long line that's on, on top of um, certain letters, vowels as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like learning and respecting that, and making sure we get that all right. Absolutely. My parents are immigrants and their um, their native language has I just call them markings. I just so because most people don't most people outside that are born and or in the US or speak English. Um, when I always go, away, you know, the markings that go above and around the letters that and the, okay, okay, got it. I got it. <laughs> I get it. But it, there is a, kind of this acknowledgement of respect of culture when you do that, even when you are not native to that culture. So I love that. Right. And I want to talk a little bit more like a little bit more about this responsibility to the brand and responsibility to culture. And one of the words that you shared, you actually just shared it recently. Ku, is it kuliana? Kuliana, right? Kuliana, yeah. Can you share what that word means? I want to talk about it, and then maybe its importance to within the Hawaiian culture. So it was our CEO that first introduced me to that word, and it mean, basically means responsibility. Um, but it's also like a reciprocal relationship to um, of who has the responsibility and your ownership of that and delivering on that. Um, so for me, the responsibility of the kuleana, um, you know, it's not just a job, it's a responsibility to um, leading the marketing effort for a rebrand um, for one of the oldest and um, largest CPG companies in Hawaii. That's a big responsibility. So I right. take that really seriously, um, especially through 
COVID, I mean, Hawaii is struggling. Yeah. Um, it has one of the highest rates of unemployment in the country. Um, visitors are not going there because, you know, because of COVID. Right. Um, so this rebrand could have happened at a better time. I mean, it would have been better if we had done it like six months before. That's all right. right. But, we do what you right. can. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, one of the pillars of, of, you know, so Hawaiian Host Group is the holding group for, like, it's the family of the sure. two brands together. Like, one of our um, values is about um, making our islands flourish. Like, how do you do that? You know, making sure we can source locally when possible. It's about, um, you know, so for example, we are um, using Hawaiian sea salt. So mm. we put it like salt from um, Molokai, yeah. um, macadamia oil that we press from our own, um, from our own nuts, uh, instead of using, um, industrial oils. So that was mm -hmm. one change. So it's all those things of like, how do you take this? How do we make our islands flourish? And then make sure that that's part of your work. Maybe can you give an example of how that shows up in this rebrand or like maybe what were the steps internally that you did as part of this process that de de kind of demonstrated this concept of Kuleana? Uh, I think making sure that the narrative that we did on the packaging, I think we had to make sure that what we put on the packaging was, you know, obviously CPG would work in health and wellness and, and really brought right. out the importance of being non-GMO clean label, you know our um, our um, our carb count. The rest of that. Right. The other part of this is that our core consumer are people who are traveling to Hawaii. So we have to make sure that we can speak to both audiences. Right. And and part of that was um, one we kept the blue. Mauna Loa blue has not changed, so mm. we, we made sure that that didn't change. Mm -hmm. um, the other parts, you know, we brought our agencies, uh, Moxie Sozo, mm -hmm. phenomenal. So they came out to Hawaii with us and we spent a week there where we went through hundreds of photos with everyone at Mauna Loa. Like what is Mauna Loa? What mm -hmm. is not? What elements of nature are? What are not? And then um, I think our um, illustrations of each place, they're actual places in Hawaii and they're places that have a lot of mana, mana meaning, uh, meaning um, force of nature mm -hmm. um, and it was important that we got that right and also got places all across Hawaii mm -hmm. um, to, to showcase like actual places that you know locals go to and that are not necessarily huge tourist attractions like we don't have diamond right. in there for example right um, so you know that was definitely part of it um, making sure it, you know we had the production manager looking at things he's like Danielle why are the waves going the opposite way from the beach and I'm like he oh. caught that because yeah. they you know he surfs and yeah. in the illustration the waves are going in the wrong way I mean small little things like yes. that or even yeah even like um what like, the images that we choose to put anywhere do those palm trees actually exist there or like right. we don't have those kind of boats so that that's not you know it, it's um, making sure every element is absolutely authentic mm -hmm. um we used, um, there's a really famous book, which is um, A Hero by a Thousand Bases, I think, um, Joseph Campbell. Oh, so yes. He wrote, yeah, love that book. So, you know, what I told them was like, this story is about you, Mauna Loa. Like, this, mm -hmm. this is, like, we're just here to take down the story and, and you know, write and write it down for you. So um, it was a really beautiful way of also going through like, okay, what's the, the brand, um, hierarchy of the the, archi the architecture right. of the brand right mm -hmm. so it came up with um Mauna Loa was the seeker and that just choosing that was just so much deliberation between the executive yeah. team between uh between everybody and I, making sure that people who had worked at Mauna Loa for a really long time you know were, were telling us mm -hmm. telling me about um you know the big island where mana is in the island and Oh yeah, that you know the the hurricane came, but because there's so much money on the east right. coast of, of Big Island, didn't hit us, you know. So it's this <gasps> really really strong, yeah, um, the the strong energy, and like it's it's so fascinating. You know, we talk about brands being authentic or real, or yeah. um, and people in Hawaii are just naturally like that. You know, when mm -hmm. we talk about sustainability. So in, since Mono has been around, we've been 
um, you know, husking and burning the the shells for um, to power our plant. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's it's almost like that. That's just the way of life over there. Yes. Um, and this whole like return to authentic and being sustainable, like that's just how it's always been. So it's been quite, you know, quite easy for me, really. Yeah. This kind of reciprocal responsibility and yeah. relationship idea. It's not. It's not just about responsibility. It's about the relationship to to other humans, but then also to the planet. It's just so holistic yeah. in in its way. And I like that that um, that the brand is now able to express it in a more authentic way that can be translated to people who only have the experiences with Hawaii that they do. Sometimes it's a once in a lifetime trip for most people, it's not a regular destination or a destination at all. And I think this opportunity to express it in this most authentic way is so respectful to the culture of Hawaii and the and the people who live there and who are native to it. And I think as I've been thinking about the naturals industry, the naturals industry is whole, we're gonna step out of Mauna Loa mm -hmm. and the work that you're doing and in the last few years, the the industry has changed or the category or however you want to slice and dice it has changed to be sort of this Hollywoodish VC money kind of world filled with celebrity deport celebrity endorsements and almost overshadowing the original superpower of the category which was taking care of people and being responsible to planet and place and um, my biggest fear is that as an industry or as our industry segment that we're kind of losing touch with all consumers well because we're strictly we're strictly focusing so much on the affluent because the affluent buy these things and the you know and we want we want these healthy people to understand how healthy we are knowing that Hawaii has this storied history that many people may not understand how emotionally tricky and complicated it is and I suggest there's a couple of movies that have come out in the last couple of years that I would really recommend to people they watch to understand what happened with the islands and and how special of a place it is and how much the opportunity we almost lost that special place because of colonial arrogance I digress um, how do we make sure, like as an industry stepping back in the room, how do we make sure that our brands, including Mauna Loa, which is really already doing it, are taking care of everyone's needs as is appropriate for their brand and without sacrificing margin? So maybe said differently. Yeah. Um, Go I, ahead. I think my look of what's going on in Hollywood and I... I, I feel a little bit differently about that because okay. it's giving because it's giving the platform okay. for us to move back in, into wellness, right? As moving okay. away from trans fats, as, you know. Even though I do agree that there is the the, the blitzy glitzy part of it, um, maybe there's a good to that. That then we're moving in that direction that that's becoming normal again. Okay. You know, that um, now Amazon owns Whole Foods. That um, you know, I, I, and I talk about div, um, diversity quite a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, the way that Mauna Loa can play in this and other brands as well, when you talk about health and wellness, um, how accessible are these brands, mm -hmm. right? And this is where Walmart is now the largest, right. um, you know, um, buyer of organic food in the country, mm -hmm. you know, and that makes it more accessible for more people. Um, the same as, you know, now you've got brands that, before being gluten free or dairy free or any of this was more of a affluent um you know demographic per se but now you've got brands like siete where you have a whole family coming together because their daughter has um you know an autoimmune condition yeah and now you've got things that you would eat at home tortillas you know a plethora of things um in, in the latinx the latin um community um, I remember for the first time when I was on Facebook and I saw a 
keto group specifically for Indonesians, where it's this Indonesian woman who was cooking all the things I, I was used to at home, you know, but cooking it in a keto way, which is, it was pretty oh. much keto just without the rice and everything else. Yeah. And that was like life changing for me because everything else was just yes. so, um, you know, Ameri Americanized when I, mm -hmm. when I say that in a way that, you know, I grew up in Indonesia. So I think there's this part of, um, you know, there's an article also that came out where Dang, um, the one of the founders of Dang, I think it's Vincent, like he, you know, talked about being- He's amazing. Yeah, American, you know, he's, Amer he's Asian American, I think yes. he's Thai. And making those flavors normal yes. in in the U.S. Right? And, yes. Um, so you know, on our one of our ice creams, it says mango lilikoi, yeah. and it was just like, do we put passion fruit? And I'm like, no. Let, let's make sure there's a Hawaiian word on there, and that people yeah. people will learn. Um, or even you know, Maui onion and garlic, because it's Maui onion, really mm -hmm. from Maui. Um, mm -hmm. And having those th you know macadamias are a more of an expensive nut compared to other ones but right we we are in walmart we are in places where it is a little bit more accessible and i think mm -hmm. that's the important part is making sure that um, we keep those doors open and that narrative of in being inclusive is mm -hmm. important so that people of cultures that might not necessarily um be on the health craze or ways yeah. you know that they feel included that that messaging is for them as well mm. i think that's key yeah thank you know thank you for challenging me on that on that narrative that i have in my head because i i'm making a mistake by saying well because it's become hollywoodized it's unattainable and and you're right actually no because it's become hollywoodized and we have people like the Kardashians and the um, Tia Mori's and, and representing these products is actually creating an accessibility because of its visibility. So I, I hadn't considered that before. And so thank you for couching it that way. I, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you for being open to, um, to my, my way of looking at it. Of course, of course. And I think the more we can normalize that from a, from, from a visibility standpoint, and then start to transfer it into the brands because I, I will say that I do see a lack of diverse representation in the way brands represent themselves, yeah. like literally as brands. I think the more we can kind of push in that direction, then the more uh, easily digestible the concept of healthy living will be transferred down across all kind of eth ethnic and economic groups, yeah? Yeah, and I think it's a bigger conversation about it's it's like you, it's not that you have to buy X, Y, and Z to right. be healthy. Right. You can do small things. Don't you know? Don't drink your carbs. Don't don't drink sugars. Right. right? right. That's right. That's right. One that you could do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like if it's more um, more protein, leafy vegetables. Cut out as much stuff that is processed as possible. Mm -hmm. and if it's just even the story or the the tools that you can have yes. to become healthier yes you know um and it and, and it's such a different story from where we were 20 years ago mm. you know or even 10 years ago you mm -hmm. know my first foray into everything was um reading um, rob wolf's book um yeah the the paleo solution and yeah. that like completely changed things for me and i was yeah. literally i bought it on the way to the airport to get on the flight to hawaii and i really? and like yeah um, and, and that, you know, changed my diet and how I feel and mm -hmm. how I've raised, you know, my husband and I have raised our ch children too. Um, and that's not that long ago that, you know, people were being like this paleo thing is not, it's not right or keto. Right. Or, um, right. But it stayed, it started even before that, right? Right. You think about the Atkins diet. Right. And, and Dr. Atkin was, you know, just shunned for his work and now years later people are saying well actually maybe you know the whole picture might have not been there but maybe right. he was onto something there and um and yeah the, the world of good agreed out of a lot of work yeah he, he's definitely kind of the godfather a lot of a lot of these more specialty diets that have some legitimacy to them so yeah. yes 
Yeah. But I think it's even like allowing those people who are leaders in that space yeah. to not just like change their mind based on new scientific evidence or new stories, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I follow Chris Kresser mm -hmm. and and he will, you know, he said this, this is what I think based on current um, yeah. Uh, current science mm -hmm. and then years later he's like I've changed my mind because new science ha has come out and yes. because of that like you know I'm changing my view on things Understood. and like allowing that as you know as we learn more about um, health and wellness and um, you know just health in general that we should you know, allow for that that knowledge base to change yeah. and influence yeah. like where we're going yeah well you I think part of your DNA kind of going back to this uh, oh this concept of giving back and social responsibility or reciprocal responsibilities is kind of part of your DNA and and it comes from your upbringing are you able to share a little bit more about you know where that comes from and how it influences your leadership style yeah, I think um, being authentic and really vulnerable with your team is so important. Mm -hmm. No, I um, I remember when I started, I was really overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and um, and you know my, my boss, who's the CEO, was just like, you know, Danielle, like I was overwhelmed too, or like you know, um, you know, t to a certain degree, he was just trying to make sure that I felt comfortable and that it was okay. And like the, the thing that we say at Hawaiian Host Group is that it's okay to fail. It's okay to try. It's okay to fail mm -hmm. as long as you're trying and moving forward. Um, and and like having to know that I'm like, hey, I messed up. I can do this and like and um, and try again. And I really appreciate having that that kind of independence um, for like the way that. I was raised, I mean, I grew up in Indonesia. I was there during the 98 riots. Um, I was evacuated out of there. Um, I actually mm. like had to um, legally get out of the country. Where uh. I had to fly a military uh, mer military plane to Batam and then um, pay someone to smuggle me in a boat out because I'd been illegally staying in the country. Wow. Because my um, my you know my parents had got divorced and mm -hmm. my mom being an Indonesian citizen couldn't take us to the states, but oh. we had to stay there. So it was just such and, and then of course the you know Indonesia brought into civil war, right? Um, no revolution, I should say. Um, so there's a part of me where you know I've been on my own really since I was like 15 or so. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing other women who are trying. Uh, who might have come from cultures that are um, don't have as much don't have as much opportunity, yeah. especially for those women where they might hesitate a little bit because their culture grew them up yeah. like that. Where yeah. it's like yeah. I answer to my father, I answer yep. you know to my husband, and then I answer to my kids. And like getting that you know growing up in that and trying to be like, no, you can have your own voice. You can be exactly. strong in yourself, right? And um, especially if it's things that. I can help us because I can say like, hey, I've just been there before. Mm -hmm. um, these are the things I learned. Hopefully that can, you know, help you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very much of the um, the thought that there's abundance in everything. You can always grow yes. the pie bigger and not yes. a competition. And it was really, you know, I remember the first time I went to Expo West and I went to go see every single chocolate company. Oh my gosh, that's um, overwhelming. Right, like, but I just want to be like, hey, I've been in chocolate. I don't know half the people who are in in health and wellness. Right. It was really interesting to see the ones that were like so open and like, hi, you know, to the ones that were just like, who are you? Why? Like, right. you're coming from a competitor. Yeah. And um, and it's just such a small industry. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do love like what I've been seeing on LinkedIn is a lot of you know brands coming together and helping each other out and giving. Um, you know, each, each other advice, like even with um, Naturally Boulder and Naturally San Diego. Yeah. Um, it's such a small, loving community. Yeah. I, I love it. It's It's been so welcoming to me. Yeah, and, and even, I'll, I'll even throw in Project Potluck. I, I spoke with Oh, you did? Oh, good. Asha, actually, yesterday. Um, she's one of the three that kind of started this, that, that community of support. And uh, it's really it's really great i mean the reason why it came together is not great but that it now exists is fantastic yeah. and makes me makes me hopeful for the for the future 
for sure. And I found out about Potluck from um, Julie Sweet from Purely Righteous Brands. And oh, okay. She, she's involved with them. So it's mm-hmm. lovely to see someone, you know, help, you know, helping um, in communities like that. Mm-hmm. She's awesome. I don't know if you've interviewed her before, but for sure. I haven't. Maybe, maybe we can pow- talk about powerhouse. that. Powerhouse, yeah. Yeah, let's make that happen. Us. Well, so kind of furthering on from there, we, I, we, you know, you and I kind of talked briefly or kind of helped. There's this woman that we're sort of trying to help guide, this woman who's an entrepreneur kind of in that California area. She is, what I love about her is she's trying to create a brand as her second career. I believe she's even in her 50s. So here she is, this amazingly powerful women of color changing and wanting to try something new and that's I feel like you and I kind of sort of bonded a little bit over that recently trying to kind of get her the resources that she needs but here you are this very busy professional woman with littles yourself that are quite young and yet you're feeling this responsibility to mentor women, particularly of color. And and you might have already articulated this, but just kind of say, why is that important for you to be doing right now, for you to be involved in that type of thing? Um, if not me, then who? Like yeah. I, I saw it, you posted it. Yeah. And I'm like, I have, how much time can I put, you know, it's not gonna take that long, at least push in the right direction. If right. Not me, then, then who? And, you know, she's not the only, you know, there, there's another woman who is, you know, coming out with with product and she had posted like, hey, what are your thoughts on mm. these packaging? And she had sent that on LinkedIn and like the comments on there, I'm like, guys, none of that is helpful to her. Right. Didn't talk about like I saw FDA regulation issues. I saw issues with the net yeah. weight statement. Not I helpful. Saw, right. I'm like, these are all the things. So it's like, how can we... Um, help women and and I think you know in that case the first case you're talking about she's like my mom you know yeah. she's she you know um start starting over and like it'd be it, for me it's just like a daughter trying to help out a mom mm. um, yeah and um I really just believe like give 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 and like that that will come back to you as well and it's not you know a huge time commitment and um and I whenever I've given I've always seen it's you know reciprocated in some form or another yeah. um and I I, I I do think that the reason why you and I connected was because you saw that in me right mm-hmm. and um the reason why you're doing this podcast too is to give that platform to to women yeah um and that's what's the the beautiful thing like I, I feel like there's this sorority coming together yes. of yes. like how can we help each other mm-hmm. um and lift e- each other up yes um so what I, I love about um, Hawaiian Host Group too, you know, um, majority of our senior leadership team is female. Um, one third of our executive team is female as well. Wow. And um, really, you know, strong leadership and all of us coming together. Um, it's been really wonderful to see that. Mm. And just over time, even at Godiva, seeing the, the, the leadership team and the management team, you know, predominantly become um more female Mm -hmm. there was one meeting i was at in belgium where we sat there and one of the the direct um the directors um the the sales guys who's he was he just sat there and he looked around he's like oh there are more women in here than there are men i've never seen that you know like it has not been like that and he's been like that for a while and to for him to just be like wow like the things are changing and he's phenomenal he's a great guy um it was nice to to see that the change yeah yeah but it's um you know, I'm trying not to apologize so much for things. I'm like, why am I apologizing? What did what did I do? You know, I'm like um, saying thank you instead. Mm. Instead of being sorry of that, I'm like, oh, thank you for being patient or mm-hmm. um, kind of changing the narrative a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a friend who has, uh, well, you know, the concept of a swear jar, but she's got a, she has a I'm sorry jar. And... Uh, because it got it got to be pretty out of control where she would apologize for tripping or something. I was like, what What are you doing? Girl, what are you doing? So she started an I'm sorry jar and she is literally and she charged herself 10 bucks for every I'm sorry, because of course, a quarter is not painful. But if you're putting in some significant money, you know, after some time, um, 
So she is weaning herself from that. And part of that is that she and I are almost the same age and we entered into kind of the professional world during the 80s where it was still um, it was still male dominated and the women who were in the industry that were successful had to take on a lot of those uh, personality traits. So we were we had to be more masculine. And so kind of finding your real you now is acceptable in business. And the strength and weakness of businesses is not that there's women, that they're, that it's a women run organization. It's just that there are men and women working mm-hmm. together and our strengths are so complementary. that is where the success really drives from, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, before we come to the end of talking about kind of Mauna Loa and the work that you're doing and you yourself, I I would love to know, maybe can you give us any, can you give us any sneak peeks about what we can expect from the brand in the next coming months? Uh, well, so we launched ice cream and you'll see ice cream everywhere. Um, we're trying to get as many doors as possible. Um, we'll have a couple new flavors that will come out. We'll mm. have strawberry guava. Nice. Uh, Absolutely phenomenal. Um, salted caramel, so Hawaiian sea salt caramel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then hopefully we'll be working on a macadamia flavor after that. Um, so roasted, just macadamia flavored mm. one. Um, and then, you know, la- launching in the middle of COVID has been quite the test. And mm-hmm. so we have some SKUs that were launched in the mainland. Yeah. Everything else in Hawaii is not m- uh, launching till May. Oh. Um, because we have it's just been so difficult where um, yeah. everyone's not been coming over um, right. you know visitors so we're like well let's just wait till May so we will do the full um, rebrand in Hawaii um, mm-hmm. on May Day which is Lay Day <gasps> oh um, how fun is that um, so that will be on that day and then of course we're going to start working on um, future innovation as well oh, um, love it can't wait so maybe everybody go to Hawaii that first week of May. Like, let's encourage everybody because you this yeah. podcast will be live before the. Let's everybody go to Hawaii and have a big lay day celebration or lay week ce- celebration and try everything new Mauna Loa. I I'm down with that. Let's do it. And we have a new flavor coming out as well. Um, it's Kiave smoked barbecue. Ooh. Um, w is actually pronounced V in Hawaiian. So mm-hmm. it's K-I-A-W-E, but it's pronounced Kiave, mm-hmm. um, which is a varietal of mesquite. Um, so oh. that, yeah, it's lovely. So we it was the whole idea of what's the number one flavor yeah. of um, potato chip, which is barbecue. So we're like, oh, yeah. let's do a barbecue version. Let's do our that's version, so, that's right. Right, um, so that was a really fun project. So that um, drops shortly too. Ooh, yes, so yummy. love it. Mm-hmm. Um, what other leaders, uh, what other women leaders, um, whether in our category or outside of our category, um, do you admire, like I would, this is a new question I've been asking people, who are you kind of, who do you admire, respect, or you simply want to elevate right now um, um, when, since we're talking about leadership and, and brands? Even if we look to politics and mm-hmm. how female leadership, the, the number of prime ministers that are female yeah. now and younger, right? So you've got um, in Europe as well as in New Zealand and, yeah. and how... Um, seeing female leadership and how it's different from male leadership and mm-hmm. that they're softer in their approach and that you can be emotional about things and that that's okay yeah is is so great you know and mm-hmm. even in my you know one-on-one meetings with my team like being emotional totally okay like we're emotional beings like not being emotional is not it's for me anyways right um controlling it and being yep. um in a right place i think it's important but um being able to see that in even, you know, at the national level, I mm-hmm. think is really important. Um, obviously, I'm very excited about our vice president elect, um, you know, yeah. and representation mm-hmm. um, being half, uh, she's being, you know, half Indian and her using um, the word um, chitti, which is um, uh, aunt in. Um, I think it's it's not Hindi. It's like one of the other um, the languages. In yeah, India. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but just having that 
I think it's really amazing. And yeah. the person I'm ta- I was telling you about, like Julie Sweet at yes. um, Purely Righteous. Okay. She comes over from Kashi. Um, okay. I, I really look up to her. Like whenever I need help or, you know, mm-hmm. n- another thought process, she's been really great. Okay. Um, and, yeah. She's just a, a good mentor and community yeah. builder, it sounds like. Yeah. 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 She's really phenomenal. Yeah. Before we leave, I, I have a few questions that I ask everybody. And the first one is, can you, do you have a fun fact either about Hawaii or Mauna Loa or macadamia nuts or even yourself that you'd like to share with our listeners? It's kind of more of a, of, I call it a happy hour fact that people can take with them. Um, well, happy, or you said happy hour in Hawaiian, happy hour is pau hana. Oh, okay. Pau means stop, hana means work. So whenever, so we have pau hanas where, um, you know, we get together and do things on Zoom. But I just thought it was a really interesting way of like, you know, the Hawaiian version of happy hour. Um, you know, I was thinking about them like what one, you know, for me, um, it's really about like, chocolate in particular okay. where looking at and I had a long conversation about chocolate the other day and how it's like oh but it's this indulgent Valentine's Day feminine sort yeah. of you know you know oh she's got her period you know give yeah. her chocolate yeah <laughs> and I'm like no guys chocolate originally meaning bitter water was an energy drink that was given to kings and used as um, you know rations during war and were, were given to warriors, right? If you, like that, that was the beginning of chocolate and it was served like that for 2000 years. Um, and I see this return and I, I remember at Godiva 10 years ago, I was saying, someone's gonna do something with, like, we have to do something with the, the cocoa fruit. You know? Yes. So seeing like this change in, um, in, in cocoa fruit um, mm. and using all the different parts of it. Yeah. But even then I'm like, Chocolate is going to return to its original um, place in society as um, as a superfood, as a food of the gods, theobroma. That's what chocolate means, right? Um, food of the gods um, being this like energy based um, thing. Because if you have chocolate where um, you don't add in the sugar and, other, and yes. other things, yeah. So I thought it was quite interesting looking at like the history of chocolate and that we're starting to move back into that. Yes. Um, I love that. Um, so that was my little interesting tidbit. Cool. Um, I love that. Um, what other brands or trends do you do you personally have your eye on, and why? Um, I've been I've been following Julie's. Um, okay. Their branding is absolutely stunning, and mm-hmm. it's this like they have a commodity product mm-hmm. like us, mm-hmm. macadamia nuts, and for them it's the the date mm-hmm. um, and how they're telling the you know the yes. cute way they talk about dates agreed um, their packaging is beautiful they've moved into other things like date syrup yes um, and made a brand around something that people consider just like a commodity at times yes mm-hmm. and even the way that they've been teaching the public about um dates like it's not you know it's fresh fruit it's not yeah. dried right right so, um i follow them because i think you know it, there's a similar storyline there where like it's lovely to see how other brands are doing it um uh, Siete, as I talked about before, mm, mm-hmm. um, you know, really love that, you know, they just came up with a spice mix for, um, for taco, like a taco seasoning. I'm like, mm-hmm. of course, like that's so, so brilliant. Um, really love what they're, they're doing there. Um, wow. particularly because it's, you know, Abuela approved. Like, I love that. Just I this whole, love that. I, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, yes. And then, um, you know, when you talk about Rob Wolf and keto and keto gains and, you know, yeah. th- that whole group. Um, you now, when I started doing keto, I was making my own um, electrolyte mix that uh-huh. he had inside of his book because you had to have enough sugar. I mean, sorry, not sugars, um, enough different types of salts. Yeah. Um, so um, I started buying their brand, which is Elemental Labs. Oh, um, oh yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that is the research and the thought process around it and that it doesn't have a ton of like has no sugar inside of it so people who are on keto can properly do it and have enough electrolytes mm, mm-hmm. i think is huge mm-hmm. um and also to help with like you know older populations who need more electrolytes you know i yes. sent a whole bunch to my dad um they they uh i just want to caveat that i did um very tiny um 
investment in them because they opened that up to anyone who was sure. uh, um, an original, you know, um, a person who invested in them or like bought their product. So I really love what they're doing too and how they're, edu like it's the education part, right? So yeah. it's not just about selling, yeah. not just about being a brand, not just about selling your product, yeah. not just about sustainability, but like how do you help the whole movement of everyone to get healthier? Yes. Um, I mean, we see the rate of obesity in the country. I know it. And how, you know, obesity and, um, you know, so many people moving pre-diabetic or are mm -hmm. diabetic and how that ties to alzheimer's right um, yes right so the more we can help and prevent that now helps you know later on yes um and that all kind of ties into the work that other people are doing like you've got 23 and me that i think mm -hmm. has been absolutely great to help people you know figure out what works with their genes to dr Rhonda patrick yeah. um, and the work that she's doing at my fitness um yeah, it all ties in. I think, like, how do all of us together help move the needle for health in the United States so that we don't see, you know, our parents, you know, it's hard to like, my mom has COPD. So it's like, part of it for me is like, how can I yeah. help, you know, how yeah. can we all help? Like Rob Wolf lost his mom to, to um, yeah. you know, to I think to diabetes so it, yeah. it's personal too like how do we all move our work forward yeah. and have a food source out in the market that um, really is nutritious and sustains you and yeah. not necessarily would do damage to your body right yeah yeah I, I spoke with um, Susie from Ramar she's a CEO of Ramar foods out of mm -hmm. also out of California and she's um, she's third generation Filipino owned business and one of the challenges that she had was, how do I make healthy Filipino food yeah. that hasn't, uh, that uh, because she's seeing her families, the, her older families, um, the generations being impacted by the Americanized version of their foods, making them ill and sick. And so the challenge of making something authentic and healthy and then educating them and being respectful to the culture yeah. has been um, has been tough, has been tough, but they're doing the work. So I, I, I get that. Yeah. 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 Um, last question. How are you? How on earth are you <laughs> a busy mom, a very a professional, a friend, a spouse? What are you doing for yourself right now that keeps you centered? That's a great question. <laughs> Um, I'm really not doing a good job of that, to be honest with myself. Okay. Um, I was really lucky that um, we partly sponsored or like we're a part of the Honolulu Marathon. Mm -hmm. And our and you know our team was like, you know, I used to run a lot. And mm -hmm. I haven't run in like three years. And our, and our team said, well, you know, we have all of these things. But what am I going to do as the director of marketing? Not go run this half, right. you know, this marathon with right. all these other people on our team. And it was 100% um, female team that signed up oh my gosh so you had you had to run it, it wasn't like one whole marathon in one day it was like over the month of december you had to run 26 miles oh easy so yes yeah, so i started running again it was really difficult but also really i remember the first step i came out like i almost started crying just because like oh my god i remember how this feels i know it you know um and I bought a new pair of Brooks, Brooks from Seattle. Woo -hoo. Um, woo -hoo. Um, <laughs> you know, my husband was really great of like pushing me out the door to make sure I do that. So I think like being outside, you know, we're lucky in LA that, um, you know, we can go down to the beach, yep. um, go out and we have a small little boat um, mm -hmm. that we can go out and go fishing or do mm -hmm. something fun like that. Um, I need to do more of that, Diana. I will have an update for you on how better I'm taking care of myself. I uh, have a commitment to run my first marathon in June, and I understand it as a bodybuilder in my 20s, and I was a runner in my 30s, and then after I had kids, it kind of went to shit. Excuse my French, and I said I gotta, I gotta keep this commitment to myself to run a marathon, and so I have been training since October, and those first few nice. weeks, yeah, I, I'm yeah. right there with you. It's, it's not easy, but. Uh, what the one thing that I can say is that foundational work that I did in my twenties, and from the bodybuilding standpoint, like I love the burn. <laughs> <I> love the <laughs> burn. So that doesn't scare me too much. I just have to 
the lungs don't like me very much. That's my my bigger challenge, but it'll get there. And you'll get there and, too. And um, watch the chi of running, and you know, remembering how to run properly, so I don't destroy my knees. Right. You know, and like retraining. I'm like, it doesn't matter how fast you go. Cause I'm like four minutes slower per mile than I was like back then. It's all right. So, you're doing it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, as long as I'm up there. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't run in like two weeks, so I better get up there. That's all right. That's okay. I will text you and say, did you run today? I'll be your partner. How's that? Do I you want... would love that. Okay. We can make that happen. That's easy. Let's do that. Awesome. Okay. Well, hey, that is the end of our time for this session, Danielle, but I thank you so much for joining me and I, I love the work that you're doing and the respect that you guys are putting into this rebrand and authentically sharing the story and the culture um, to the rest of us through the brand and the brand development and everything. So thank you for all of that and your commitment to helping the women of color kind of gain some stronger footing as professionals in the market. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. And if there's any way I can ever help, just reach out. 100% anytime. Okay, well, and what's the best way? Do you prefer people reach out to you through LinkedIn? Yeah, just reach out to me on okay. LinkedIn. Great. That'd be the best. Okay. Great. All right, so thank you so much for your time. Mahalo. Um, Thanks, Diana. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by Retail Voodoo, a creative marketing firm specializing in growing, fixing, and reinventing brands in the food, beverage, wellness, and fitness industries. If your naturals brand is in need of positioning, package design, or marketing activation, we're here to help. You can find more information at retail-voodoo.com. And so there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel and share with your network. Until next time, be well and do gooder.